breakfasts and the one-day games, plus there will be profiles on the great players, stories of spin bowlers, batsmen and much, much more. So that's it. He's got to hit a boundary. We go over the top. The men will go back inside the circle. They're right on the line. He'll probably pitch it in towards Reg Stump and the full. It's out! If you love cricket, register your interest now by phoning the Australian Cricket Video Hotline on 1-800-035-665. And watch out for more exciting Australian cricket videos at a store near you. Here's what all cricket fans and collectors have been waiting for. The Australian Test Series Video Collection. Australia vs India 80-81, West Indies 92-93 and England 94-95. Now you can enjoy the finest moments in Australian Test Cricket at home, anytime. All the drama, all the highlights, all the action with some of the greatest cricketers of all time. The Australian Test Series videos. Collect them all today. Hello there, I'm Tony Jones and welcome to A Test of Time, the first test of the 1981-82 series between Australia and the West Indies at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Well, this match was one of three tests held following a similar series against Pakistan, which the Aussies won by two tests to one. The three countries were involved in the triangular one-day international series during the summer also. The third test match against the Pakistanis had also been held at the MCG and had been marred by a wicket that crumbled badly after the first couple of days, leaving the Aussies all out for just 125 in their second innings to lose the test match by an innings and 82 runs. Well, there were fears that the wicket for this match would be similar, but the Aussies made only one change. Graham Wood and Bruce Laird opened the innings, followed by the skipper Greg Chappell, who despite getting 201 against the Pakistanis in Brisbane in the second test, was struggling for form. Then came Alan Border, Kim Hughes, Dirk Wellam, Rodney Marsh, Bruce Yardley, Dennis Lilly, Jeff Lawson, who'd replaced Jeff Thompson, who was 12th man, and Terry Alderman. The West Indies went into the match with Desmond Haynes, Fayoud Backus at the top of the order, Viv Richards, skipper Clive Lloyd, Larry Gomes, Geoffrey Dujon, who was making his debut, keeper David Murray, and the bowlers, Andy Roberts, Michael Holding, Joel Garner, and Colin Croft. Well, Greg Chappell won the toss, and in front of just on 40,000 fans, decided to bat first. Field for a catch of the wicket, he's gone, that's a good catch by Murray. Very good catch down the leg side by Murray. Laird swinging at a wide ball, wasn't a good one. Laird goes, caught Murray, and Australia have lost their first wicket for four. Well, this is the second occasion that that identical ball has been served up after Viv Richards has had a word with the faster bowler. The previous over saw Roberts serve exactly the same sort of ball up, and Laird did not make contact. This time he does, and he's on his way. And the first wicket has fallen with a total at four. Now here comes the Australian captain. Great pressure on him. Three successive ducks in his last three innings. Coming in to replace Laird, who was out in that fashion. Low catch by Murray. And Lloyd absolutely jubilant, but no more jubilant than either Murray or Haynes moving in there from short leg. On Australia, four for one. Here's Greg Chappell, three consecutive ducks in his last three innings and all sorts of suspicions in his mind about this pitch. And he's gone, first ball, that's his fourth consecutive duck. Greg Chappell caught Murray, bowl holding a duck. In my word, that was a good ball, it was wide, but didn't Greg Chappell help himself to his own dismissal? 
by just following that as though hypnotised. The ball wide of the off stump, as you can see. Tap onto the back foot, following the ball, a fairly thicky hedge, straight into the hands of Murray. No need to play at that, Greg Chappell. And there he is, out for a duck, and really in a trough, both mentally and in physical form. Two for four. And the new batsman is Alan Border, coming in to replace his captain. Who was dismissed? like this. That was a nasty delivery, I think, from holding because it's one of the few deliveries that really did lift and cut away from the bat. It was wide, it's true, and Chappell had no need to play it, but it was such a hypnotizing sort of delivery that Chappell found himself compelled almost just to follow it and edge that ball into the gloves of David Murray. was a beautiful delivery from Andy Roberts that was one you could see him cut the fingers down to cut the ball away from the left hander and he did it that's always a great thing for a bowler it was said that Andy Roberts hadn't taken a wicket and put the mopper on Graham Wood and that ball just carrying through to David Murray beautiful delivery pitched went away from the bat Graham Wood had to follow it Andy Roberts now getting into the act by claiming his first wicket in Australia Three for eight. Laird, Chapel, and Wood all gone for eight runs. Reminds me a little of uh, the day when Keith Miller knocked over quite a few of the England batsmen here. Way back 54 5. That's how Graham Wood went. Outside edge, a beautiful piece of bowling there. Fingers cutting down, getting way cut into the left hander. And quite a good safe catch. All three victims to David Murray behind the stumps. Beautiful run in. And another one. Holding has broken through again. Four for 26. A good ball that going away from the left hander who followed it. Four catches to Murray. Four wickets to the West Indies. And reminiscent of the previous delivery of the previous dismissal, that of Graham Wood. Alan Border sparring outside off stump and a jubilant. David Murray, he's fourth victim, Holdings third, so what a great combination, and exit Allen Border, and Australia four for 26. New batsman Dirk Willem comes in to face Michael Holding, well that's uh, something no one would relish, that's the way Holding picked up his third wicket, Allen Border, good ball, it went away from Border a long way, and he assisted it through to Murray's gloves. All four victims to David Murray, Well played, beautiful shot by Willem, played away on the leg side, and that's going down to the boundary for four, it'll be the first four of innings. Beautifully timed, well pitched up ball, smashed to the square leg boundary. And that was the attempted Yorker, and then Willem was right under that, he's very strong with his pads. He was in there, but it was wide, and he worked that beautifully. Timed it to perfection, that's confidence built for him and the first four of the morning. Andy Roberts dropping back to, to mid-on for... Kim Hughes, that'll be there for the attempted hook shot, I feel. He might drop one in short, and the Australian vice captain hooks in the air. Doesn't quite get onto it. It's quick enough. Could go in that region. Oh. And then dropped him. No ball called. Well, that was the bounce that Bill Laurie was talking about. He went for the hook shot, didn't middle it, and went straight to bat pad who dropped it. However, it didn't matter. It was a no ball. That was always on, with Roberts being moved a bit on, but... He didn't get it, but he got it square and it went to Haynes. He put it down, a very difficult catch for him. Yep. And that's beautifully played. Holding after it, but he won't get there. He's very fast, of course. And the ball just beats him to the boundary. Croft straying down leg side. And being tripped off his toes by Willem. So the end of the over, it's 4-4-55. Four, four And that's a gone. Beautiful catch by Logie. The substitute swooping on that catch, diving forward and picking it up inches from the ground. Wellam caught substitute Logie. Bold Croft, 17, Australia, 5 for 59. Colin Croft now getting into the action. Pitching it up on the front foot 
and a great catch by the substitute fieldsman diving forward and Logie catching it inches above the ground great fielding it is by the West Indies that breaks the sequence of four court behinds and Dirk Wellham on his way back to the pavilion and Australia 5 for 59 so Rod Marsh comes into a situation which is not unusual for him and he's replacing Wellham who was out in this fashion great diving catch by substitute fieldsman Logie wouldn't have carried to him if he'd have stayed back he had to dive forward good bowling by Colin Croft he'd worried Wellham in this over a couple of short ones the one pitched up and perfectly judged in the covers by Logie and that's just not carried but a magnificent bit of fielding by the big bird didn't quite carry but what a great piece of work would have been a superb catch if it had it carried but once again very little luck for Andy Roberts just bouncing short of big Joel Garner got across and my what distance did he cover and that's look of disappointment as he slapped the hand down into the ground gets across a remarkable save by the big fellow very handy to have in that gully position Hughes on 29 he's easily top scorer so far in this Australian innings once again he's on strike to Andy Roberts and he's hit that one very well really got that on the middle of the bat really trouble to the boundary and I'll just get the feeling Tony this wicket now just starting to settle down Kim Hughes had a lot more time to get that one away Robert straying again down leg side Hughes just clipping it behind square leg firm straight drive that's a, a wonderful shot straight back past the bowler for four runs second boundary in the over for Hughes and our camera, our close-up shot as Sandy Roberts was coming in on Kim Hughes. You could see him talking to himself, say, telling himself to concentrate. And that he did on that occasion to perfection. Lovely straight drive. Right down the ground. Good call by Marsh. And Desmond Haynes coming in and demonstrating to the batsman just what danger there would have been there. Marsh refusing the call. Hughes felt that it might have been a run and a shifty piece of work by Desmond Haynes he was looking at the other end then Tony he wasn't even looking at the stumps that was an incredible throw just have a look at it. he picks this up looks up the other end and then throws against the way he was looking and hits those stumps and that made Kim Hughes really dive back he's got that one away and crisply as well now suddenly this uh pair left hand and right hand from Western Australia just making things a little more difficult for the West Indies and certainly by using that shot Rocky Marsh is making life difficult for the West Indian bowlers and that's one of his better strokes another forward of Kim Hughes there haven't been too many of them today for the Australians forty nine to Kim Hughes with holding straying off line for once and by virtue of allowing Hughes room on the offside giving the Australian vice captain the opportunity of playing that very good square cut that favorite shot of his and that's a long long way out there to the point fence and there's four more and that's his 50 you could say that was a lucky shot but the innings hasn't been lucky it's been a triumph of uh, good old fashioned guts and determination and he thoroughly deserves that half century it's one of the best he'll have played Yes, it certainly was. That was not a convincing way, however, to go to that half century because it was an inside edge with Hughes leaving that gap between bat and pad, the ball going off the inside edge and straight over the top of the off stump there. Hughes with 57 still there and looking real good, as is Marsh on 21. And this is the 46th over. Oh. 
It's a nick and he's gone out, caught by Vivian Richards. Well, that was a pretty orthodox catch for Vivian Richards and he took it so nonchalantly, straight to him, made no mistake. So Rod Marsh on his way back to the pavilion. It might have been an orthodox catch, Tony, but that's certainly swung the game. Just as Marsh and Hughes was looking good, the bounce and the direction of that line and length from Garner was too good for Rodney Marsh and Vivian Richards did the rest and it's a vital breakthrough for them at 6 for 115. Bruce Yardley striding out there after that catch in the slips by Vivian Richards. This was a good piece of bowling, the line was right but Marsh uh, looked just a little bit casual in the defensive probe then he was looking so good, he was getting right behind the line of the deliveries and that change was a big result for the West Indian side. Holding now to Yardley and straight away Yardley finds the gap and we've got four so Yardley wasting no time it was in the air and went through the gap between Gully and Forslip for four runs that's the end of the over six for 124 and that's it the, the Yorker right through him and uh, an important innings from Bruce Yardley. Not the most effective or orthodox of shots, and this is how it finished. The perfect ball for the occasion. Yardley had been playing the ball on the up outside the off stump, just helping it on its way through the slips. Garner, realizing this, put the Yorker in right on off stump, and that's the end of Yardley. A very effective 21. He departs with the total at 7 for 149. New batsman is Dennis Lilly, but he won't face. Yardley was out to the last ball of the preceding over from Joel Garner. How well the big fella does bowl this Yorker. Absolutely spot on that uh, return crease, that batting crease. Getting right through Yardley's guard. Yardley backing away slightly towards the leg side to give himself room to play that offside slash and leaving his off stump unguarded. And that's in the air and that's an easy catch for Gomes at cover. So Lily is out, caught Gomes, ball by holding for one and Australia have lost their eighth wicket for 153. An extraordinary way in which to be dismissed. That ball outside the off stump Lily going for the big back foot drive and getting an outside edge to it. The ball probably stopping on him slightly as he lost that to Gomes who catches the ball about in the point area. So that's the end of Lily. The eighth wicket now is down for 153. New batsman, Jeff Lawson, coming in to replace Dennis Lilly. Just getting the bottom of the bat. It really was not the type of shot for a batsman, or should I say for a bowler, who considers himself more and more as a batsman as the years go on. He bowled him. Leg stump. Five wickets for Michael Holding. Australia are now eight, nine down for 155. Congratulations all round to Michael Holding. For that, his fifth victory. Perfect delivery for a tailender. A Yorker, well up, on leg stump penetrating the gap between bat and pad and rattling that leg stump. Absolutely ideal, with Lawson trying to hit across the line of the ball towards the leg side. So Lawson is out, and now with only one wicket to fall, Australia 155. New batsman is Terry Alderman, and Michael Holding has one ball left in this over in which he's already taken two wickets, and that was the second one. Terry Alderman hitting right across that one, being bowl leg stump, and for the seventh time in his test career, Michael Holding has five wickets to his credit. And in fact, it might not reach. Logie is after it and it just manages to beat him. Four runs for Hughes. As I said, the boundary was open because uh, that was sensible cricket on the part of Hughes, knowing full well that the men had been brought in to save the single. He takes the attack to the enemy and pulls that away through mid-wicket. He was, if anything, a little bit too close to the line of the ball to hit it powerfully. Garner saw him coming and uh, 
pitched that ball short and close to the batsman's body. Well, that's cracked. He really hit that one. That's four runs. Well, that's a magnificent shot. It fairly raced to the boundary. Again, Hughes showing his intelligence. Waiting for the ball wide of the off stump and then unleashing that enormously powerful back foot square cut come drive. As Croft resumes the attack. Can he end the Australian innings? He's bowling to Alderman. And Alderman, following the example of his Western Australian teammate, has driven Croft right back down the ground for four. And that was a full toss, a deliciously inviting full toss was smacked with a great deal of vim past the bowler and it looked to me there as, the, uh, as though the umpire had called a no ball we'll have to wait and see looking for two good cricket again and good thinking from the Australian vice captain nice little touch shot that one just dabbing it down, had a look around, saw where the field fieldsmen were. They were back very deep. From the attendance here at the MCG, 38,755. And each one of them would dearly love to see a Kim Yu century. He's on 96, just one boundary away from that three figure. Good shot. A fine shot and a great hundred. That We'll see a lot of hundreds in test cricket, but you won't see too many gutsier ones than that. Nine for 198, Kim Hughes a level 100, and there haven't been too many innings for teams where a player has dominated so much. 100 out of 198. And he's gone. But he did the job, he waited there while Hughes got his 100. Australia finished too short at the 200 mark, all out 198. Quite a loud snick there from Terry Alderman to wicketkeeper David Murray, who picks up five victims in the innings. Well, an absolutely sensational innings from Kim Hughes, saving the Australians from disaster. 100 no score of just 198. He received solid support from Wellham, Marsh and Yardley, while Terry Alderman hung around long enough for Hughes to reach his century, hitting on 43 for the last wicket. Michael Holding was the best of the bowlers, taking 5 for 45 from 17 overs, with Roberts, Garner and Croft all picking up wickets and bowling with their usual fire and venom. David Murray behind the stumps claimed five victims. The Windies had to survive only a handful of overs until stumps, but Lily and Co were looking for a breakthrough. Well, Bowling, he's gone, he's got him, he's gone, a great breakthrough for Australia, he's given him out, he has caught the third slip. What a magnificent bit of bowling that was by Kerry Alderman, the board just holding up a little bit, finding the outside edge of the bat, and the catch taken at third slip. A superb catch, this fine ball, a little bit of outswing, hits and swings away, back is with the angled bat, and diving forward. Wood taking a great catch and what a match. The crowd arrived at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. A great century by Hughes and now the West Indies in reply. One for three. And what's going on? My goodness, the Australians running in all directions there. They were looking for a stumping down the leg side and that's because he's standing right out of his crease. That was very interesting. Never seen it before. Yes, see Rodney Marsh coming up, right of screen. And fortunately, the ball was just a fraction more and he didn't gather it, but uh, Croft was back. Well, listen to that crowd. Game could hardly have been more evenly poised with the West Indies just three runs ahead. Like the Australian top order, the West Indians got off to a shaky start before Clive Lloyd, Gomes and Dujon, along with Murray, salvaged the innings. Dennis Lilly was the star with the ball, taking his best ever figures in a test match, seven for 83, while Alderman and Yardley also struck, sharing the other three. The Australian second innings needed a solid start in order to set up a chance for victory. 
It's well played by Wood. A shorty's ball outside off stump and cut away down towards the third man boundary. Larry Gomes is after it, but that's four and a good start to Australia. And once again, a big crowd in the Robert Craig ground appreciating the start. Difference in pace with, with a fair amount of time there. He waited for that to come onto the bat and just paced it rather than hit it hard. In the pace of holding, now we'll have to speed away to the boundary, and that's a confidence builder for Wood. He's got it, and he's dropped it. My goodness. That was a straightforward catch. That ever easy to slip, of course, but Clive Lloyd put that down, and really, he should have caught it. Well, that was a regulation out. It was waist high, and Clive Lloyd seemed to snatch at it slightly, and look at the pain in his face as he images as That was a good delivery, and Wood angled the bat, and it went straight to the West Indian skipper, who did a Greg Chapel, put it down. Got away nicely. And it's a good uh, attacking stroke. It's the way to do it. Just carry the attack to them. Another which side's bowling. That's a good shot. And that was the plan of the West Indies, hoping that Graham Wood would miscue that hook shot, but on that occasion hit it beautifully, taking the game right up to the West Indies fast bowlers. And that's what you've got to do. A situation like this, you've got to try and get that scoreboard moving. Oh, that's well played. Beautifully clipped off the legs for four. Into position early. Timed it beautifully. Four runs to Laird, carrying him to 15. You really don't need to hit that ball, that sort of a delivery, too hard for Michael Holding. The ball is coming down at about 85, 90 miles an hour. And all you have to do is just help it on its way. And that's precisely what Bruce Laird did. No third man. Richards desperately chasing but won't get there. How many runs come in that vacant third man area these days? Captains don't seem inclined to plug the gap down there and just running it down between third slip and gully. The, persisting with the, the gentle off spin of Vivian Richards. It's well placed by Laird. Slightly over pitched on leg stump and he's hit it through the gap between mid on and the wicket. Larry Gomes misfields down there and in fact nudges the ball onto the boundary pitch. So four runs to lead. It should have been three. Gomes knocking it onto the boundary somehow down at deep mid wicket. And the odd wheel just starting to come off the West Indian wagon. That uh, was a regulation three and Graham Wood on 46. And as I said earlier, his um, test performances are excellent. Oh, and there's a big appeal. He's given out. He's out. Caught behind. Well, that's the breakthrough the West Indians needed, and Australia could have done without. An outside edge from Wood there. A good bit of bowling by Joel Garner, and well taken by wicketkeeper Murray, who gets a little pat on the head from Backus. It's always easy in the country box, but Richie Benet mentioned at lunchtime that this angled bat of Graham Wood was going to get him into trouble against a bowler who bowls a right line and length. And for the second time in the match, Wood goes caught behind. That's the perfect line of length. He doesn't play with the full face. You notice he angles it and folds it towards the slips. And Murray does the rest. And just when Australia was set, Joel Garner breaks through. And it's one for 82 as Greg Chappell comes onto the ground. Come on, Greg. This is the one. Last ball of the over for a signal. There we go. He's off the mark and he's broken that terrible run. And listen to the crowd. Are oh, they loving it? And I'm sure he's got a little smile on his face. Two runs to Chapel. Four ducks in a row, and now not out two. And the crowd loving it. Well, that takes the pressure off as far as the duck is concerned. He's laughing there, he's nodding to the West Indian players, and Vivian Richards, in particular, a professional, would feel some feeling for Greg Chapel, but the problem now for Greg, they're even getting congratulations. Well, that's got to be a first in Test cricket, an opponent congratulating a man getting off the mark. Three there. Very well stroked away through the wicket. And that's the half century for Bruce Laird. A fine performance. He's come back into the Australian side this year, and he and Graham Wood have given the Australians some splendid starts. 
been one of the problems in recent years and this year Red and Wood have uh, done it really well 50 in 106 balls and 149 minutes and that is that's caught down the lake side and David Murray now has taken his seventh catch in the match and equals the record previously held by Derek Murray. Greg Chappell is out. Fort David Murray, bold Garner. And when you're out of form, it's amazing you can find ways of getting out. Greg Chappell once again out down the leg side. What a good catch by David Murray. He had a lot of ground to cover there and did it with ease. And he's hooked that away. That will go for four. Roberts will not get around in time. And another boundary down the leg side to Laird. It really is quite extraordinary that the West Indies are continuing to bowl on his leg stump. Another piece of misguided bowling. And I think Bruce Laird out there must be licking his chops. He's enjoying the title, sure. And that's through extra cover. Over pitch ball, a long chase here for Dujon. The batsmen have plenty of time to get their third run. Good shot by Border. Roberts now into his ninth over. Having opened the attack and bowled quite briskly for a period of five overs during which he conceded 11 runs. But since that time, he's come back to bowl an additional three overs. This is his fourth. Hasn't been able to generate the same pace. I feel he's out, gone, so Croft has made the breakthrough, deservedly so. What a magnificent spell of fast bowling by Colin Croft. A really deserved wicket for him. Laird, leg before, for 64, Australia 3 for 139. And for once, Laird misses that deflection on the leg side. Thinking that the ball will hold its own and carry on down the leg side, it doesn't in fact, and just straightens that slightly. And Laird not far enough forward to escape the ultimate decision of umpire crafter. So the end of a noble innings. Laird out LBW for 64, 3 for 139. So here is the hero of Australia's first innings. Kim Hughes coming in at the fall of the third wicket for 139. Century maker of the first innings. One of the papers on Sunday suggested that he'd done it for par. Well, I wonder who you'll do it for in this innings. It's a crucial stage of the match here. It's well timed. Long chase here for Haynes. He'll catch the ball inside the boundary. But by the time he does and returns, the batsman would have taken three. Fine return from Haynes. So Porter moves on to 24. It's now three for 142. Didn't quite get that, but will pick up two. And that's his 50. That's good innings from Alan Border. Won't say it was his most fluent, but it's one of his best because he's fought back magnificently. Hasn't been having all that good a trot with the bat, and the supporters are right behind him. Good square drive four runs Colin Croft is bowling with a hand injury there so he was struck in the hand when he was batting when he went in as night watchman and uh, it looks to me as though that probably has come against him it's 3 for 184 And that's the first one we've seen crawl along the ground. And boy, did it keep low. Short run, Michael Holding. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see the side on replay, but it looked to me as though it kept very low. The most expressive thing in this dismissal is the exclamation of Kim Hughes, which was a despairing O oh, as that ball went straight under the bottom of Kim Hughes's back. 
Look at that. It really was an authentic Gazunder. One that goes under the bat and comes up the other side. 490 and holding again off his short run, bowling his second over of this new spell. The new batsman, Dirk Wellham. That's got to be out. The only way that couldn't have been out was if he got an edge on it. But that looked to me to be absolutely dead plumb. The second wicket to holding in seven balls with a delivery that pitched outside off stump would have removed the middle stump straight from the ground with Wellen jumping in the air in anguish as that ball cut back into him and kept low. And we've seen a fine hand from Wood. Greg Chappell again failed. And Border fighting hard for his side. And some great bowling from this great fast bowler also. Well, 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 there's a big appeal that he's given him. He's gone. Rod Marsh doesn't look all that happy, and I think it was probably because that ball really did rear up by comparison with a fair few that have kept low. So a tremendous delivery there from Michael Holding. Just at the time when you're looking for the ball that's keeping low, one hits and takes off, and a fine performance by Holding. He's come back into the attack, and he's sliced into the middle order of Australia, and now 6 for 199. Holding to Yardley. That's a quick ball, and... Uh, He's got it away on the leg side. That might well be four runs. Well, that wasn't a classical hook shot. But uh, in terms of its effectiveness, it was four. Yes, and that's where Bruce Yardley is so dangerous. He's not orthodox, but you must bowl good line length. If you bowl wide of the stumps or too short, he'll attempt to hook or cut. And he was in all sorts of trouble there, and he whipped it away. A survival shot, but a shot that gave him four valuable runs at this stage. Can't ask for any more than that from a lower order batsman. Well bowled, he's bowled him. That's a beautiful Yorker. Well, he's been trying for a while to slip one through the guard of Yardley, and that was a magnificent one. Right up in the block hole at pace, and back goes the middle stump. Well, Mr. Indians needed that wicket because Yardley was a danger man in this situation, and that was the perfect Yorker. Middle stump, and Yardley departs for 12, but he certainly made some contribution towards the score at this stage that's beautifully bowled, he's reasonably wide and there goes the middle peg straight back and the big gap is found out by Joel Garner who's bowled very well in this innings. An opening partnership of 82 was just the platform the Aussies needed. Wood with 46, Laird scoring 64 and Border unbeaten on 65 with the main scorers. Greg Chappell once again failed. Michael Holding again proved his class, picking up three wickets. David Murray, meanwhile, broke the West Indies wicket-keeping record for a single test match. During day three, it was announced that Maxie Walker had decided to call it quits after 34 tests and 138 wickets. Well, in a low-scoring affair, the first half hour of day four was going to be pretty vital to both sides. The Aussies wanting as many runs as possible, and the Windies as many wickets. Well, he's bowled him. Round his legs, that ball getting past Porter's pad as he moved across to play that defensively on the leg side, and the leg stump out of the ground. Well, what do you need slip fieldsman for when you can do that? Michael Holding uh, absolutely smashing that leg stump out of the ground. Alan Border just getting the uh, the pad across a little bit too far. And boy, that was uh, a rather costly mistake for him and for Australia. And there's not much in it. Crashes into leg stump. And once again, Holding has made the breakthrough for the West Indies. Well, that's well bowled. There's a big appeal there and Lily given out. That was a good ball from Holding. I suspect it just moved off the wicket. Actually, Lily nicked it and once again, Murray made no mistake behind the wicket. Well, a very good delivery there. You don't get them much better than that. Pitching off stump, it means the batsman's got to play. And the ball just moved away nicely off the uh, wicket. And unfortunately, Dennis Lilly leaves with his little mate as uh, Michael Holding takes his 10th wicket for the match. And Australia are now 9 for 220. Boys bowled him. Well, that was a quick delivery, and that one came back the other way. Clean bowled. Terry Alderman. And that gives Michael Holding 11 wickets in the match. That's the only, only the second time that he's got 10 wickets in a match. And what a tremendous performance that was by him. So the Australians all out for 222, which means that the West Indies now need 220 to win. 
The Australian second innings wrapped up in 20 minutes with Border top scoring with 66, along with Wood and Laird's contributions. They were the main highlights in a score of 222. The rest of the bats, however, found the Windies' pace barrage simply too much. For the West Indies, Michael Holding was once again the record, taking 6 for 62 to make his match figures 11 for 107, while Big Bird got 3 and Croft took the wicket of Laird during a hostile spell. David Murray extended his keeping record by one to nine. So the West Indies needed 220 runs to win this match with nearly two full days to play. But the state of the wicket was never going to make the run chase easy. The Aussies were in the box seat. On the pad, a big appeal this time. He's got him, he's gone. Now to LBW, what a great start for Australia. Backers, LBW, Bowl Alderman. And my goodness, this really is exactly what the Australians wanted. Ball just coming back from outside the off stump, and uh, although Bacchus is uh, onto the front foot, there was not much bounce there, and he is now on his way for a duck. The West Indies have lost their first wicket, and uh, that will bring Liv Richards to the crease. Here he is now facing Alderman. What a delivery! What a breakthrough! And look at this ball from Alderman coming in from outside the off stump. Richards contributing to his own downfall by aiming that stroke about towards mid on, hitting slightly across it. But uh, the ball going right between bat and pad. And that really is a crucial blow as far as the West Indies are concerned. Put him down. Sharp catch, but uh, that's one they might regret. Sort of thing that wins a match, if ever I've seen it. Laird, not quite able to hang on to that uh, opportunity, which didn't go all that quickly, but yet hit, hit Laird in the chest before he could get his hands to it. Bounced out, and he made a despairing grasp at it, and Lily kicks the ball in exasperation. Fine shot. Beautiful straight drive. Confidence builder for Desmond Haynes. Yeah, Desmond Haynes' is first boundary. You'd probably breathe a sigh of relief there. That was a well hit shot. Straight down the ground. Dennis Dilly desperately trying to cut off the four. That was well struck. It's in the air. He's gone. Second slip. Alan Border taking a sharp catch. A good reward for the young bowler. And Lloyd's out. Caught at second set for 19. And that really puts the cat amongst the pittance as far as the West Indian batting line up is concerned. Well, a well deserved wicket from Jeff Lawson, really bending the back and taking the ball away. Clive Lloyd looking to hit it through that gully position and a good sharp catch by Alan Border. Took a good one in the first innings and followed it up again. And the West Indies hopes drop away a little as Clive Lloyd makes his way back to the pavilion out for 19 and West Indies 3 for 38. So Haynes to Gomes this time. Should I say Lawson? Gomes and he's dropped him. Well, what a tremendous effort that was. The left hand being stuck out there a long way by Terry Alderman. And again, that outside edge. Yes, it was wide of Alderman. And the ball travelling quite swiftly. So Gomes survives. He's 7, 3 for 49. It's a bouncer and my goodness. No ball called and the ball's gone under the stumps. Well... What a break that was for the West Indies. The stump's broken. I suspect the ball went down and broke the, the... He hit the leg stump and the bail fell off. Well, that was very, very lucky. No ball called. Had it not been, of course, Haynes would have been out. Haynes, going for the hook, makes contact with the elbow. And the ball going from the elbow onto the leg stump with that horrible rattle. And Haynes has been hurt. That's the bail down. Let's look at that again from another angle. You'll see the contact made there as the ball comes down and hits the base of the leg stump with Haynes looking on helplessly. 
Good shot, straight down the ground. That's well timed. And Lawson can't beat it. That's a good shot from Larry Gomes. Alderman just over pitching a little. That seems to have been the tendency from Terry Alderman coming back with the older ball. Bowled particularly well with the new one. Yeah. Nice shot. Beautiful back cut that. And once again beating Border into the fence. That's a really good shot. It's a very late cut and a very delicate one there from Desmond Haynes. Well placed. Just what the West Indies need. A couple of boundaries. Really gets the scoreboard ticking over. One to Gomes. Yardley to Gomes. Oh, well bowled. What a good ball. Beaten in the flight. Change of mind shot. And I wonder if Rodney Marsh triggered off that bowling change with Greg Chappell. As he was down there having a long talk with Lily and then Greg Chappell. Well, a well-flighted delivery there from Yardley, and in fact, I think that's what did Gomes. I think he thought he was going to get to that on the full or the half volley. What a delighted Bruce Yardley, and so he should be. That ball just pitching short of Gomes' bat. He had intended to drive, I think. Then, the last minute, he changes his mind, and just enough turn to beat the edge of the bat. And a delighted little kangaroo hop from Rue Yardley, and what a happy man he is. It's going to Haynes. Oh, he's into the air. Could be out. He's missed time to full toss. Will he under it? And he's caught it. Wow, that's pressure for you. A slow full toss. Haynes could have hit that ball anywhere. But he's been in a defensive frame of mind. And he fell in this fashion. Well, that's what happens when you tighten up. Desmond Haynes. Just a moment's lapse in concentration. Got the full toss. He was tight, tried to put it away. As soon as he hit it, he knew they had mishit it. And Dennis Lilly, the safe hands, coming around, catching it in front of the eyes. And a great breakthrough for Australia. And second wicket for Bruce Yardley. Announce a black from him, dismissing Desmond, Desmond Haynes off that full toss. And Australia, uh, West Indies now 5 for 88. Oh, he's dropped him. A difficult chance. Greg Chappell moving to his right. Yardley with two for four. Nui made it three for four. And Bruce Yardley with nearly two wickets in an innings. Just a slight curve on that ball. Dujon going for the drive. It just carried to Chappell's right hand. Might get a better view of it from this angle. And just goes there and Chappell just at fingertips. The 24-year-old Dujon now facing Dennis Lilly. Off the back foot, and this is a dicey run. It's a shy at the stumps and a big appeal there for a run out. All the Australians up in the air, but the umpire, umpire Croft, are knocking that appeal back. There was a little stutter in that run. Apart from that, it was orthodox cricket. The ball just nudged to the left hand of cover, Dirk Wellham, who returns that ball just by the side of the stumps. And it looks as though David Murray was short of his ground when the bells went off. There's absolutely no doubt about that. This was out by approximately a foot. Bales taken off now, and Murray very definitely short of the line. Ah! There's a big appeal, and he's given out, caught behind. Well, once again, Yardley gets the breakthrough. Every Australian in the air, a little outside edge, and well taken by Rodney Marsh. A great bowling, too, by Yardley. Plugging away just outside off stump, finding the outside edge, and that's the end of Murray. A valuable wicket with Yardley bowling a flatter, quicker ball that doesn't turn and Murray plays for the spin, attempts to run the ball through the gully position, gets a thin edge and he's on his way even before Yardley appeals. He's hit that one away on the leg side. It's in the air and it's going down to the boundary for four. He actually timed that very well. It was just a little nudge with the forearms over the top and down to square leg. Well, it might be that Lilly will set the trap again. He got him caught down there in the first innings. Oh! No ball called, and it's clean bowled him. Well, have a look at that. It's a little break that the West Indians needed. The hands 
over the face, a no ball called, the middle stump lying flat on the ground. Well, no wonder Jeff Horsman's doing that, because I think that's the second time in this innings that he's bowled a no ball that has claimed a wicket. He uh, has previously bowled a ball which uh, came off Haynes's forearm onto the leg stump. Now he bowls this ball that passes between bat and pad and causes Rodney Marsh to give a little vis visual demonstration of annoyance. Oh, isn't it lovely to see? Marshy is furious. There's a good example of it. It's a tremendous hit. That's the way Andy Roberts operates. He'll block and block and then he'll really let fly. First six of the match and what a moment to do it. Yes, that's his game. And... Uh... He's got a pretty hefty bat and he wields it well. Ah! Took a run, it's chance. He's caught him. What a great catch. A magnificent catch. A leg glance, a quicker delivery. And Yardley's done the job and what a fine piece of wicket keeping. Great tactics from Rodney Marsh. I saw him have a chat to Bruce Yardley at the start of this over and it was the quicker one, the one that was speared in. A bit of turn, you can see Rodney Marsh taking the credit for that one and well bowled by Bruce Yardley, looking for the leg glance and the stumping too. Two ways out there and great. You can see the elation on Yardley, backed up by Marsh and what a great breakthrough at 10 minutes to six for Australia. That's a good shot. That's four. Well, it's not all over yet as far as the West Indies is concerned. Michael Holding still playing shots for the West Indies. Well pitched up. Another well-flighted ball. Just the type of shot that I'm sure that Bruce Yardley would have liked to have seen to come from the bat from Michael Holding. Ah! That's close. He's out, yes. He's got him. It looked out. Roberts getting it across and Dennis Lilly strikes. What a wonderful test match and a great one for Dennis Lilly. Dennis Willey's worked hard for this wicket and coming at the right time giving his old foe Andy Roberts right in front Roberts just shuffling across Willey delivering it very close to the stump you can see the leg stump there and would have put the middle and leg stump and a good decision by umpire Robin Bailash he's waited all day to give that one it was the correct decision so Andy Roberts, he's out that's close too, he doesn't have for shots, he's out yes, he did not for a shot, the big man and that's it. The players want to go off. The umpires are still standing there. They're looking at their watches. It's nine for one, five, four. What a finish. And Dennis Lilly on a hat trick. First ball tomorrow morning, catching big Joel Garner right in front. Joel Garner just taking a half pace down the wicket, a darted back, kept low, and two wickets in two balls, both LBW. Joel Garner, a disappointed Joel Garner. He worked so hard yesterday to get the West Indies back into this game. Well, at the end of the fourth day, it seemed that only rain or a batting miracle would save the West Indies from defeat on the final day. Jeff Dujon once again started with the bat, scoring 43, while Bruce Yardley ripped a heart out of the middle order to take four wickets. Terry Alderman got the ball rolling, cleaning up Bacchus and Richards in quick succession. Returning for day five seemed a mere formality for the Aussies. So Lily, bowling some of a bit off stump. Holding. And that's close. It's got to be close. That's out. That's the match. And a great match for Dennis Lilly. Ten wickets in the match. And big a great victory for Australia. Brought back after being three for eight. And that goes down as one of the great test matches of all time. And holding uh, once again pulling LBW. Playing well back. And Dennis Lilly operating on the stumps. As uh, the experienced campaigner he is. Realising that that was the best place to be. And uh, it's incredible how many times this man takes either five wickets in an innings or ten wickets in a test match. And a formality it was, with the final wicket falling after just ten minutes of play. The Australians winners by 58 runs, and Dennis Lilly's third wicket, making him only the third bowler to take ten wickets in a match seven times. Tony Gregg then handed out the spoils. Congratulations, Greg. A tremendous test match. I think probably yeah. the best one I've ever seen. Yeah, it's one of the best that I've played in. I think I can think of probably three or four test matches that I've played in that uh, are very similar in the fact that the fortunes have fluctuated throughout the game. But I think this is one of the most satisfying victories, uh, the fact that we've been under a lot of criticism in recent weeks. 
Uh, the West Indians, probably the best team in the world at the moment. And uh, our team performance, I think, is as good as we put in for a very, very long time, and it was very satisfying. An interesting performance in light of the Pakistani match, yeah, and a decidedly better pitch. Yeah, not that much decidedly better, but uh, <laughs> certainly it was, and uh, you know, the toss again played a very important part in it. Perhaps it wasn't quite as clear-cut as in the game against Pakistan, but it was still very important, and I think we had the breaks in that respect. But we still played well, and I suppose it uh, doesn't matter what the conditions are, you've, you've got to play well. Um, you know, we, we played well and we didn't, uh, didn't allow the West Indians to play as well as they can do. So, all in all, it was a great effort. On to Sydney now, um, that's a day and a half off. Yeah. Your plans? As far as uh, me personally goes, yes. uh, I'm going to have a game of golf this afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to get as far away from the cricket ground as I can. Uh, you know, I'm just going to keep playing the way I've been playing for 15 years and uh, I'm quite sure that the title will turn very shortly. Well, as, uh, as you probably know and uh, we've probably all experienced, the, the daggers are out a little bit. No, the knives are drawn, they've got short memories. Well, that's all part of the, uh, the life that we lead, I think. Uh, people are, are paid to, to comment and to criticise, and uh, they're doing that. Um, what I've got to do is go and perform. Occasion now, the player of the match award, the Benson Hedges Players Medallion, that gold medallion, a beautiful one there, and a cheque for $1,000. And I don't think there's any doubt about who the player of this match was, because in my opinion, he set it all up and made it what it was. Kim Hughes. There we are, Kim. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Tony. That first egg must have made you very happy. I uh, remember losing the captaincy myself and uh, having to get back in the side and play. That's tough for anybody. You've come back and, and played a knock, which probably for me was one of the best knocks I've ever seen in circumstances which were very, very tough. Yeah, I was naturally very, very pleased that uh, at three for eight uh, we weren't looking that flash. And uh, I think it helps in a way. You, everybody get as a bit of a bonus, I think, to start off with. And uh, I think it was just a matter of hanging in there for long enough to get used to the, the, the bounce was, was good. Um, and it wasn't really a quick wicket, but it was just a matter of, say, lasting long enough till lunch anyway. And after that, she was a matter of just playing in line and that sort of thing. And uh, they had the field up, and if you could hit straight, there was always going to be a, a few singles and twos and that sort of thing. But You've played a few good knocks in your time. Um, was this one the big one for you? Yeah, I, I think uh, you've got to look at the situation, who you're playing against, and, uh, and that... And, it definitely would be my best innings. Uh, the centenary test was a, a different sort of an innings. They, they, uh, the bowlers, you know, were obviously a, a lot, lot less quicker. Um, and I was sort of able to do whatever I could do. But out here, it required you playing straight and uh, and sort of trying to get as many runs as we possibly could. But I still felt, with only 190 on the board, that unless we got an early breakthrough, I, particularly as the wicket did play reasonably well for the first two or three days that uh, we were going to be struggling. But fortunately our bowlers bowled magnificently in both innings and it was a, a great win. So Kim Hughes was named man of the match for his magnificent century but both Lily and Holding must have come in for pretty close consideration because of their exploits with the ball. The day also had its place in MCG history. It was the last time the manual scoreboard at the ground was to be used before being relocated to the Manuka Oval in Canberra. Its electronic replacement would be up and running in time for the 1982 football season. Well, that brings us to the end of this marvellous test match between the Australians and the West Indies. I trust you've enjoyed it and look forward to bringing you another great video. Goodbye. This has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.